actually many factors, many variables that um, help or that obstruct the process of innovation. Uh, so different experts, different management gurus, they have identified really uh, a whole lot of factors which are important to promote innovation. Uh, but I think broadly we can still identify a, a, a few uh, factors which uh, uh, to my mind are, which according to uh, many also experts are, um, are quite important uh, for making innovation happen. Uh, so, so, so among some of these factors, I think these four factors to my mind uh, is uh, quite useful. Uh, the first is uh, challenging uh, orthodoxies. Um, I'll come uh, later, you know, what does it mean? Then also uh, harness discontinuities, that how actually you harness discontinuity, because often we harness continuity. Mm -hmm. We uh, like to give things uh, as it is, so, but in a, in a um, explosive uh, or exponentially growing uh, innovation situation, we need to learn how to harness discontinuities. Uh, same way, uh, I mean, how do we leverage our competencies and strategic assets, uh, and which I think to uh, me also is, is very important to understand. And, and lastly, um, how to understand unarticulated needs of the customers, the society, the stakeholders. So, I mean, this um, four orthodoxies in a way are quite also well explained uh, in the book called Innovation to the Core, uh, because we are talking about actually innovation which, which is going to influence core of our activities. See, so far what was happening, we will see that organizations are um, Organizations were innovating, but those innovations were always very peripheral. Uh, say if uh, if uh, I uh, I am a um, automobile automobile manufacturer, so what generally I think um, we'll try to do okay, we'll make some innovations to make the engine fuel, more fuel efficient, or maybe. Um, you know, we'll um, see that uh, uh, the um, introduce uh, some uh, <clears throat> accident uh, prevention uh, techniques so that you know, even if accident takes place, so that uh, you're uh, 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 you are more safe. But what happens that often in this uh, kind of you know, there plenty of this kind of maybe small innovations in the automobile industry that has been taking place for last, you know, two, three decades, many. But still, uh, we, we don't sometimes innovate in the core of these activities that where actually uh, the, mm, say, engine uh, has to, um, engine has to get some fuel whether it is okay, it's a uh, fossil fuel or biofuel, but the fuel has to be given to the engine. Someone has to drive the car, and um, someone um, probably also, you know, uh, need to um, need to have uh, a particular you know, type of uh, roads uh, where only you know it can. Uh, I mean, it's required uh, to run. So now, suppose if someone starts questioning something which which affects this very core activity of an automobile manufacturer, that okay, um, uh, what if uh, that a driver is not required? So that itself would require 
kind of engineering which will affect your very core of the core activities. Or say, mm, yeah, or say you, if someone tries to make this car run on a water surface without getting drawn. Okay. So, so I think now uh, um, this kind of innovation which we are calling it, it's a disruptive innovation because it is affecting core of your activity. So um, that requires um, probably some factor, I, 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 I mean, uh, or that you know, the organizations have to um, really uh, ensure that those factors are there in the uh, in the company of strengthen in order to really achieve this kind of you know disruptive innovations.